It is only when we fully live our faith that we recognize in the cross our own experience lived out and perfected, oriented to God and made fruitful by the action of a loving faith. Let us walk in the light of Christ by uniting our joys to the joys of Christ, our sorrows to the sorrows of Christ, and allow ourselves to be carried to heaven in the brightness of his victory. One of the important points for this, for me, was when my mother died. Um, growing up, uh, my father... Well, let's just say he wouldn't have won Father of the Year award, okay? He basically had three loves in his life, women, alcohol, and cigarettes. That's what he loved. Um, you know, I mean, we didn't hear things like, I love you, man, never went to church, nothing like that. So my mother was a very, very strong influence in my life. In fact, I would say that I am the man that I am today in large part due to my mom. Uh, my mom was sick for the last 20 years, 20 plus years of her life, and uh, during the last three years of her life, you know, we she lived with us uh, here in Oregon. You know, we're from, I'm from New Jersey originally, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom was living near my sister uh, in Alabama, and then uh, we moved her out here. And we were very close. I used to bring her to mass. Uh, you know, every Sunday, in the wheelchair and everything, she had, she had a lot of oxygen and everything, and it was, a, it was a wonderful time. My kids got to know her. And uh, I remember I was going to EWTN to film a series, and I kissed my mom goodbye and said, I'll see you when I get back, just like I always do when I, when I go on the road. And uh, I was at dinner on Sunday night, the day before the shoot, with my producer and his wife, and the phone rang. And it was a hospital saying that my mother was on life support and they didn't think she was going to make it. And then 10 minutes later I got another call back saying that she died. So I was devastated, obviously. Um, Father Mitch Packwood, who's our scripture professor uh, in graduate school, who's also a good friend of mine, uh, I spent most of the night with him because he knew my mom from when we were in the, in the courses and stuff when she would go to EWTN. And uh, it was a very, very difficult time. But I was holding it together pretty well. Um, I'm the oldest, and uh, I, they always, my siblings always look to me to be the source of strength, huh? And so everything was going, I mean, it was well as something like that could go as far as the planning and the funeral, and, until the funeral mass. And I got up to read the gospel. Now, whenever I would read the gospel at Mass, I'd stand up, you know, and they say, Hallelujah, and I'd look down and see my mom. Mm -hmm. And I'd look at her, and she'd look at me, and make a little contact before I read the gospel. Out of sheer habit, I get up there at a funeral to read the gospel. And I look down, she's not there. But I look over at the casket, and I realize she'll never be there again. And I just broke down. And just, literally in the amble, I broke down and started crying right there. The alleluia is finished, and I'm a mess. I'm in tears. I can't see, read nothing. My brother, one of my brothers comes up, and he puts his arm around me and says, Hey, we need you. When we were kids, you were always there for us. We need you to be strong for us now. So he went and sat down, and I... I remember just trying to pull myself together. I said a quick Hail Mary. I read the gospel and I preached. And um, then after the Mass, I did the burial for my mom and everything. And, and remember, she lived with us. So whenever I would go into her room, I would cry. Every single time. Because it felt like she was still there. Every time. And so for months, until one Sunday, the gospel was the presentation in the temple. And remember, they bring Jesus to be circumcised, and Simeon blesses both of them. They turn to the Blessed Mother and says, This child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Jerusalem, and for a sign to be spoken against, a sign of contradiction. 
and the sword shall pierce your own heart, so that the thoughts of many may be laid there. And when I read that gospel, it was like I was reading it for the first time. And I thought to myself, Mary knows what I'm going through. You see, it's not a matter of just losing somebody that you love. When you lose a parent, you lose somebody that's part of you. I mean, I came out of my mother. I lived in her for nine months. I'm actually part of her. But Jesus was part, I mean, she gave flesh to the word. That was her son. She bore him. She knows what it's like to lose someone that's part of you. So I said to myself, what if I placed my broken, wounded heart into the pierced heart of the Blessed Mother who understands my pain? And when I did that, I was finally able to walk into her room without crying. Now, does that mean I, I didn't miss my mom anymore? But I think about her and pray for her every single day. But it's that, see, and that's what the Blessed Mother, she, she helps us to be that light. So sometimes when we're so dark, so see, see, the arrogant thing is that we think we can do all this by ourselves, and we can't. We think we can do all of this by ourselves, and we can't. What does St. Paul says in Corinthians? My power is made perfect in weakness. And the weakness is recognizing the fact that we need Jesus Christ every step of the way. And sometimes when we are in so much darkness that we can't see Jesus, that sometimes we need somebody to help us to get back to Jesus. And for me, it was the Blessed Mother during that time of my mother's death. And St. Therese, for many of us, is also that light that helps us move back toward the light of Christ by the witness of her life. How many, I, I've met someone in Alaska who was in this deep, darkest red story of a soul and help bring them back to Jesus. Huh? That's what I'm talking about here. So one of the keys that St. Teresa, we have to recognize we can't do this by ourselves. So, let's get toward the end here. St. Teresa says, I ask Jesus to draw me into the flames of his light, to unite me so closely to him, that he lives and acts in me. Wow. That he I think what St. Therese is talking about here is allowing the light of God to shine so brightly in us that it fulfills that beautiful epistle of John. God is love, and he who lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. That's what she's talking about here. I feel that the more the fire of love burns within my heart, the more I shall say, draw me. The more also the souls who will approach me will run swiftly with the odor of the ointment of their beloved. For a soul that is burning with love cannot remain inactive. See, so sometimes the fire of God's love in another person's heart has gone out. Or maybe the pilot light is burning really low. There's a little bit of light there, but it's not on fire. It's not a flame. And so what St. Therese says is when we open ourselves, and what does it take? Humility. Humility doesn't mean thinking less of yourself. It means thinking of yourself less. And that's the great gift of self-giving love. That's the power of Christ's witness on the cross. Complete act of self-gift, of giving of yourself. How do, a very practical example. When I give talks, I run into people, especially in this culture, that are unemployed. They have no work. And they said, Deacon, I've been praying, I've been praying to God to help me find a job, and I just don't know what to do. I said, what about volunteering? You see, what do you mean volunteer? I said, well, you're looking for a job, you should continue to do that, but with the time that you have all this extra time, why don't you volunteer for the church? Say, this is the Paul or some other kind of charitable organization. Use your time to help. And they thought, like, oh, okay. I mean, they had nothing else to lose, right? 
So the person is there helping out in the soup kitchen, you know, and then so also they're, they're they're finding this joy now. They're starting to find this peace now. Because when they look at their own problems, they look at these other people's problems, at least I still got a house to live in, at least I still got food to eat, they know. So he's making a gift of himself. It just so happens that one of the people who were working there at the shelter uh, is a supervisor at the particular company and they got to talking and she, oh, what part should you go to? Oh, I go here, you know, they're talking, talking. This guy tells him the story and the guy says, wait a minute, you're looking for a job? He goes, what do you do? He goes, I tell him, he goes, wait a minute. He said, I'm actually looking for somebody just like that. But I got a job. <laughs> huh? Yeah. You, you, see, you see? So sometimes you think we, we're so used to living, oh, I'm, I feel sorry for myself. Go out there and make a gift of yourself and God will bless you. Huh? That's what, that's what I love St. Teresa is saying. This is what she's talking about. If we were made inactive, then that light of God's love can't burn within us. Huh? That's what she's talking about. So to end here, the light St. Teresa of Lisieux points to is not only a moral truth, it is the person of Christ who does not hesitate to say of himself, I am the light of the world. I am the truth. Christ is the light because in his divinity, he reveals the Father's face. Huh? If all the lights were off and it was dark in here, you couldn't see somebody standing in front of you. You need to light the light so you can see the other person's face. That's what he's saying here. That it's the light of Christ that helps us see the face of the Father. He is the light because in his humanity, being like us and in solidarity with us in everything except sin, he reveals man to himself. And that's a beautiful quote from uh, the Second Vatican Council document, uh, Gallium and Spets, huh? about man, Christ revealing man to ourselves. He allows us to be the person who God created and calls each one of us to be. Unfortunately, sin has obscured our capacity to know and to follow the light of truth and has exchanged the truth about God for a lie. But we have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. We endure the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The baptized have become living stones. By baptism, they are a chosen race, a royal priest, and a holy nation, God's own people, that they may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. St. Therese says, everyone will see that everything comes from God. Everything I have, everything I merit, is for the good of the church and for souls. Any glory that I shall have will be a gratuitous gift from God, and it will not belong to me. Everybody will see this clearly. So when your light shines, Christ's light shines. That's her point. So in the battle against the possessive and dominating self requires humility, vigilance, and sobriety of heart. At the end of our life, when the bridegroom comes in the middle of the night, in the hour of darkness, the light that must not be extinguished is that of faith. Commit your life to the Lord. Trust in Him and he will act. So that your justice breaks forth like the light and your cause like the noonday sun. Turn away from evil and do good and you shall have a home with him forever. And I end with one final quote from St. Therese Lachie to tie this all together. She says on the day of her profession of final vows, She's praying to God. I ask you for nothing but peace and also love. Infinite love without any limits 
other than yourself. Love which is no longer I, but you, my Jesus. May your will be done in me perfectly. And may I arrive at the place you have prepared for me. And so with the St. Therese, the light that's in the darkness, let us like her have the love of God, the light of his truth, penetrate our hearts so deeply that when, remember, because everybody's so worried about the end of the world, this, what's this Mayan calendar garbage that the world's going to end in December? Look, we, we can't worry about the end of the world. We have to worry about the end of our world. That's what we have to worry about. So St. Therese encourages us to have the light shine so perfectly in us that we will be prepared when Christ we meet him face to face at our death in that darkness. Remember, death is not the end. Satan doesn't have the last say. In that moment of darkness, there will be light. Amen. 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 Amen.